It is hard to conceive, but three days ago, both World Trade Towers rose 1,362 feet into the sky. Visit those same towers today. At their tallest point, they rise maybe 100 feet above the street. And while it's true there are six floors below street level, now filled with debris, engineers at the firm that built the building's best guess to account for the missing 1,200 feet of material from each tower is that large portions simply vaporized into the dust that rained down on New Yorkers immediately after the collapse. It was that powerful. Get out of here! We're talking here about 43,600 windows, 600,000 square feet of glass, 200,000 tons of structural steel, 5 million square feet of gypsum, 6 acres of marble, and 425,000 cubic yards of concrete, turned in good part into a cloud, says environmental medical doctor Stephen Levin. I was astonished at the degree to which solid materials were turned into pulverized dust as a consequence of that building collapse. I think it was striking. The Environmental Protection Agency has been sampling the dust, and one specialist told ABC they believe the clouds that appeared immediately after the collapse were mostly gypsum dust from drywall, cement dust, and plaster, which can cause problems. Cement dust is an irritant. Fine glass powder is also an irritating material. The EPA did find spotty levels of asbestos. A sample on a police car turned out dangerous. Another sample a couple of blocks away, not dangerous. But most interesting, in the mix, they are looking, they think, at specks of steel that used to be beams and elevators, marble from the lobby floor and facings. So what were once the strongest architectural elements in the two towers were pulverized. Large portions turned into clouds like this one. Still, there is this mystery. If some of the hardest materials were vaporized, how to account for the presence everywhere of paper? Fully intact letters, business forms, stationery. Paper is so fragile and combustible, and yet somehow, maybe because we have so much of it, it was everywhere. Robert Krulwich, ABC News, New York. One of the things that's very suspicious is the fact they hauled away the steel so quickly. So, uh, but has anybody ever done an analysis for the he heavy neutron activated isotopes in iron? Okay, I have a piece of the iron yeah. that, from the World Trade Center. This was uh, left over from a monument that was put together. Good. Uh, and I have that, and it's bent. It's, it's quite heavily so, bent. So you, by bent, do you think it was physically bent from a physical wrenching, or was it bent from like a thermal pulse or something? I showed it to a machinist. It's hard to tell. But yeah. it's clearly, it's clearly, no, you'd it's an angle iron and it's clearly opened. You know. What you want to do is you want to have a piece of metal that looks like it was literally cooked. Like those, that like fry you see in the pictures. That it does have some uh, residue yeah. on it. So I don't yeah, know if, in other words, it, it looks like it was cooked either by high pressure, very hot temperature thermate, you know, like you talked about, or the idea of a thermal pulse from a, from a, a mini nuclear or conventional weapon. You'd want to see if there's neutron activation because I only think a percentage of the actual debris of the building would be acceptable to the test, really? which is why my guess is less than 10% of the material that, that we would see would probably be samples of area where, where that might have occurred. That's an interesting approach. Well, in any case, this is... Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's worth, worth testing it, yeah. And I did uh, look just... I'm not saying this is the most sophisticated test, certainly, yeah. but I'd looked with Geiger counter. And this is about, uh, gosh, it was last year. Yeah, most of the isotopes and, though, are going to be stable, non-radioactive. I guess you know the answer. It's in my paper again. Yeah, there, was no, there was no radioactivity yeah, in this iron, this steel, from the World Trade Center yeah. that had been heavily damaged. And, and indeed, there was a, a flow of uh, material on it. So right. I, I would say yeah. this was a But the heavy sample. isotopes are not radioactive. Th there, was, there was nothing yeah. about background. And the, the results are, the numerical results are given yeah. in my paper there. So I encourage you to read yeah, yeah. No, they, One of the things about iron uh, neutron activation is only a very tiny amount of the isotopes and it has a relatively short half-life are going to be radioactively stable ones like iron 58 are not radioactive so, at all. So the point is, I summarized in my paper uh, yeah. various uh, studies that had already looked for radioisotopes including iodine-131, alpha, gamma, and beta emitters and, uh, of course, for myself, I looked at the steel and the dust sample right. that I have from Jeanette McKinley. Right. So it'd be interesting if you see something that I missed. What we're going to be possible. doing is we're, we're using a technology because we... And, and then others sure. missed, too. Yeah, we also have to use the right technology, too. 
because we're going to be looking for stable isotopes that are above background by a margin wide enough to see if it shows the isotope ratios that would indicate that there was enough mixing because um, that pyroplastic cloud is going to be spreading and mixing and also now, enough isotopes. Why wh are you looking at the stable isotopes? Then? No, we're, we're looking for these these ones like the higher and heavier isotopes like you know the ones like uh, like uh, beryllium 9 and 10 um, you know uh, niobium uh, 94 and uh, cobalt 59 and 60. Well, cobalt-60 would be particularly interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I think it depends on what was there. If we find the heavy isotopes of beryllium, that's going to be a, a real clincher because beryllium is, is, is rare to see other than in places like, uh, uh, you know, around a nuclear device. Okay. Now, so we, we need to underline that you're looking. That's good. Right. But the results are not yet in. Oh, no. Okay. And we'll see. So, and we're, and we're, getting, we're, we're planning on running uh, probably at least three samples. From my classified sources, which are also confirmed by Alan Sadowski, that the World Trade Center towers were demolished with both thermite cutting the outside the joists of the building, because the building was created as the first building in the world of this type of construction, the World Trade Center 1 and 2, where it was suspended from the outside like a cage and also from the center core. The center core was vaporized with a chain of pearls of dialable micro-nukes, U.S. Army Corps engineers placed there by Israeli Mossad, which, by the way, it's not because it's the Jews. They're just the trigger finger or the hitman on the hand of the CIA. And the outside were cut with ther super thermite charges used to cut the joists. Uh, a third of the mass of the building was turned into atomic vapor, which only could do that, including the vaporization of the radio tower, if it was vaporized at hundreds of thousands of degrees for microseconds, which literally could turn into an atomic vapor. So a third of the mass of the building was turned into a vapor. Uh, it's telling that I've been trying for six, seven years now to do radioactive testing using plasma neutron spectroscopy, not only here but in Europe, and I was told repeatedly that even when I requested it in Germany and Britain that I would be reported to the Department of, of Defense and arrested if I t tried to do the testing. I've tried even people like Dr. Asaf Jarakovich, who when we were trying to do the testing, the uh, powers that be even disappeared with his children. And Dr. Drakovich was struck with a special forces team that hit him in his Ontario, Canada home because he had a home outside Washington, D.C. He's been in the military, in the U.S. military for years. He is uh, a triple specialist in radiation and radiochemistry and nuclear toxicology. And uh, we were doing work through the Uranium Metals Research Council for vets from not only Kosovo, Yugoslavia, uh, but also from Iraq and now Afghanistan on the exposure of our troops and also the people in these countries to deplete uranium weapons. And believe me, you wouldn't believe how aggressive these countries are coming after us for even requesting the testing.